Surrounded by some of his favorite things, here's your look at the Diamond Select. This is the Joker Gallery Statue. The Joker was once the leader of the Red Hood Gang, until a fall into a vat of chemicals altered him irrevocably. His skin was bleached white and his psyche permanently damaged. He maintained his criminal tendencies, but with a heightened level of savagery and devil-may-care attitude. Simultaneously mirthful and malevolent, the man now calling himself the Joker began to fixate on Batman, the vigilante indirectly responsible for his fall, coming to see him as his nemesis, a frequent inmate of Arkham Asylum. The Joker is a purveyor of deadly jokes and murderous riddles. He is unpredictable and very, very dangerous. This PVC diorama of the Joker is based on his appearance in DC Comics, is made of high quality PVC and features high quality detailed sculpting and paint applications. Before we get to looking at the Clown Prince of Crime and his gallery release, the first thing we're going to do is measure off to the very top of this statue. Stop in the tape measure at what I believe to be the top of his head. After all, that seems as a good place as any. According to the readout, you're looking at the statue of the Joker standing 9.9 .9 inches in height. It was this far away from being 10 inches tall. It could have easily been 10 inches tall. We're gonna go with 9.9 .9, though. And for centimeters, we're gonna go with 25.3, about 25 and a half centimeters tall. Just recently picked this statue up at my local comic book store. It's been around for a bit, but not too old that you can certainly still find this now at your local comic book store. And what a decent looking Joker rendition this is. We'll of course pick up the statue and we'll have a look at the display base first because there's a lot going on down here. Well, still, there's a lot going on up here, but let's start at the base. The base, yes, in fact, has some of Joker's favorite things. There's a stick of dynamite. There's a little trigger as something that even the Wily e. Coyote would be very jealous of. The little activation lever that would set ablaze this stick of dynamite. You also got some chattering teeth, a handful of chattering teeth. There's about five of them there. Some laughing fish, another chattering tooth set of teeth there as well. Uh, all the details have done extremely well. Also, maybe something there from Harley Quinn, perhaps. There's the mallet there as well. I really like the amount of detail that they've been incorporating into the display base here. Not only is the actual rock face highly detailed by incorporating two tones of color, but really, like, everything that's on this base pops as you look at it. Even like the laughing fish, they've painted these dead staring eyes looking right back at you. Look at the big giant grimaced smiles staring right back at you as well. Like these are really, really neat looking laughing fish. Some of the creepiest laughing fish I've seen included with the Joker. Uh, the stick of dynamite you've got right there as well. It doesn't look like it's actually attached to anything. You gotta believe maybe that the wires are running underneath perhaps Joker's feet and connecting off to the stick of dynamite. Like I said, there's really a lot to be gandering at here. And this is even before we start looking at the statue itself. The mallet, perhaps Harley Quinn's, perhaps Mr. J's himself has some additional airbrushing that's been added in there, some darker colors, and you can also see the wood grain has been very nicely sculpted, not only in the, at the head portion, the main hammer section of the mallet, but along also the handle section there as well. 
Quite liking the design sculpt of Joker's face here, going with classic roots of more the elongated chin, the pointed nose, and the high-peaked eyebrows. This is all, again, very classic-looking Joker, and one thing I really do like about this is that they went with this design choice. He does have in his hand no concealing it whatsoever. The face of the card is that of the Joker. On the other side, though, you've got the top printing of what the card would look like. But I like also the fact that he's showing it to you, almost as if he's presenting his business card. The face is, like I said, really quite good. If anything, I feel like it may lose a little bit of the initial details that were advertised on the back of the box. Showing you what I mean by the difference in colors, if you look at the, let me just see if I can get the angle correctly. There we go. If you look at the box artwork depicting what the statue should look like, there's definitely a lot more additional contrasts of darker colors incorporated into Joker's face. I'm not really sure why they changed it from this to essentially this. I mean, really, I like the coloring that they go with on the back here. The darker eyeshadow is still present on Joker's face, but definitely not to the same level as the original production statue looks like on the back. You definitely have a lot more darker colors specifically around his mouth. He's got the darker outlines around his eyes. And overall, like I said, there's a lot more detail that pops, even though you would imagine it would be the exact same head portrait. It's definitely different from what we should have gotten to what we actually did get right here. Despite those slight shortcomings, overall, again, I'm happy with the face. Could it have used the additional coloring? That certainly is debatable from one collector to another. Some would feel that perhaps that was too dark of a color, whereas this is more of the familiar, what kind of paler complexion of Joker. It's definitely something to be said, though, where at the very least, they probably should have added a little bit more detailing around his eyes, just so they could have stood out a little bit more. I don't expect necessarily that the colors had to be as dark as they did on the back of the box, but at the very least, like I said, some details like around his eyes, some details around his, around his mouth, lips, and certainly around his teeth, I think could have added a lot more extra oomph to an otherwise pretty good-looking statued sculpt. Looking at the rest of the statue, he's wearing his rather familiar Joker costume and colors. He has his orange vest, his green, ja his green shirt, and then he's got his long-tailed purple jacket. A bit of a surprise located on the back, he is sporting a rather sharp-looking knife. So perhaps while he's doing a sleight of hand at the top with his one hand with the card, he's preparing to go a little bit more stabsies with the knife that's located on the back of his jacket. I like the detailing that they did add to the jacket, if you can hopefully see close-up looks at it. It's not a, a smooth-looking jacket. There's actually a little bit of texturing that they added to it. Mixed that with the fact that they put in natural wrinkles forming around like the elbows and anywhere that the jacket would twist and turn, you have a very realistic-looking draping jacket, just in a more cartoon-looking style. There's not really a whole lot of color, which again plays heavily more so on the back of the packaging where you do see a lot of darker colors being utilized into the vest. Here they've put that in, but certainly not to the same extent. So you really only get a bit of airbrushing that's happening around the button sections. The shirt itself is completely just left to one singular color of green. And he's also got his little yellow flower there. Don't get too close, mind you. I'm sure it probably squirts acid. So just be mindful of that. Uh, the pinstriped pants, again, another familiar sight for particular Joker. And really like this one being that it's classic Joker design would also have that as well. And he's got his familiar Joker feet, which we've already looked at when we looked at the display base. Overall, like I said, the statue it's, as a whole is really well done. It brings back and really reminds me of like the old classic Batman comics where Batman would fight a Joker with this look to him. With, uh, once again, the elongated chin, the very pointed nose, and bug eyes. Uh, overall, again, really like this one. At the very least, the only disappointing thing I would say about this particular statue is, once again, we'll just bring in the box artwork. There it is right there. Is again, I don't know why specifically they went from this to this. It's still a good-looking statue, don't get me wrong. But if they could only have brought in some of the really cool darker tones that they put to the face of that Joker and actually managed to pull that off on the physical release of him, then I think I would like the statue a little bit more. 
It has all the elements for what I would want for a Joker statue, starting at really what I think is a really cool looking base, with the chattering teeth, the laughing fish, and stick of dynamite, oh my. The only thing I like is said, the only thing I would have changed slightly, is I think I would have made more of the colors represented here, actually put that on the physical statue release, and then we would have a home run hit. When I source out my statues for my collection, 50% of the time, I usually will forget completely that a company is releasing a certain statue. I may see it and stumble onto it in my local comic book store, immediately pick it up and remind myself, oh right, yeah, I forgot that statue was gonna be coming out. The other 50% actually is probably the one that gets my interest going the most for the statues. And I may see the initial concept designs online. And then I'll go to my local comic book store when I think it's gonna be coming out and try to pick it up that way. Or if I know it's coming out and the store simply doesn't have it at the time, I see if I can get it to order in. Joker here was a case more so of the latter where I knew right off the bat that this Joker was coming out because I had saw images online. I was really excited to pick him up. So of course I checked out my local comic book store and sure enough, they had a copy. You can imagine though, a slight disappointment probably filled my face when I picked up the box for myself, looked in the front window, and experienced a Joker's face that wasn't quite as good as the image located on the back of the box. I'm sure again, I don't know why the changes were made specifically from what I thought was a really bold expressioned Joker face to an otherwise slightly more paler presentation with the actual physical copy. It's a shame that Diamond Select couldn't have kept it closer to the color palettes that they used for the initial concept design, because I think we would really have a really neat and creepy, if you don't mind me saying, Joker presentation. What we end up getting, though, is still a good-looking Joker. The sculpt is some of the best I've seen, and it does hark back to the original comics that I would have been collecting probably when I was around 12 to 14, was when I was really collecting Batman and Detective Comics. This is the type of design of Joker that I've always been a big fan of. Couple that with the fact that he comes with a really neat display base. One of the best display bases I've seen for Joker because it has all of his favorite things. Laughing fish, chattering teeth, mallets, and dynamite, oh my. All of that can be contributed and added up to an otherwise really good looking Joker. It's just a shame that his paint in his face doesn't quite live up to the hype, I think, that the promotional artwork originally started stirring. If you did manage to pick up the statue for yourself, let me know down below what you guys think of the statue. I am really liking it, don't get me wrong, and I certainly don't want in final looks to convey the idea that I'm disappointed with the statue. I'm just really happy with how it turned out. I just wish it had a little bit more of the depth that the original concept design had when they first circulated images of the statue coming out. If it could only look a little bit more like, tho like that, and a little less like what we ended up getting, I would think be a little bit happier with the end result. I'm still liking the statue design of Joker. It just is missing a little bit. It's almost there. It's almost there. Either way, if you manage to pick up the, this one for yourself, let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think of the Diamond Select, the Joker Gallery statue. Still a neat looking designed statue. I'm definitely gonna be looking forward to putting that one out on display in my collection. If you guys are new to this channel, or let's just say you're a longtime viewer, never got around to it, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Swing next door and turn on that bell notification. I don't really know how more effective the bell notification is gonna really be, or if moving into 2020, if that bell notification will even exist at all. Maybe it's gonna be changed to something else. Who knows? In the meantime though, make sure you turn on the bell notifications so that you are notified when new videos are coming onto this channel. Make sure again, you hit that subscribe channel, uh, subscribe to this channel and swing on over also to the homepage and see if there's any videos that you may have missed. With the sheer frequency of videos that I'm posting on a regular basis, there's a very good chance that you may have missed out on something that I posted most recently. So check out the homepage and see if there's anything that uh, you may have watched or may have missed and give that a watch if you get a chance. A whole lot of video is going to be coming your way. We're going to have a look at some upcoming Diamond Select statues and other collectibles. So keep your peepers peeled for that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.